Hey, what's up guys? David Johnson here. In this video, we're going to be talking about aperture and landscape photography. What is the right one to use? We'll get into that coming up. Welcome to the channel. On this channel, we help you improve your photography and loving photography even more. So if you're into that, subscribe to this channel. Now, here's the thing. Aperture can be a little bit confusing when you're first getting started in your photography. You have all these numbers going around your head and it can kind of feel like you're going back to math class in middle school or high school, literally my nightmare. So let me help you out here. Aperture does two things for your lens. If I grab this camera right behind me, what the aperture does is it actually lets in more light or less light and it also creates an effect of depth of focus within the photo as well. And while I'm talking about this and holding my camera up in front, please don't mind my yellow fingernails. My daughter really wanted to paint my nails this morning. And so here we are. Now on this lens, it's a manual aperture lens. So if I hold this up, you can see these little tiny numbers on the ring of this lens that show you what the aperture actually is. But when you do that, how do you actually know what aperture to use? Now, I like to keep my photography as simple as possible. So I'm gonna share two different scenarios with you here that are gonna help you take your aperture to the next level. Scenario number one is just a big landscape scene. And for a big landscape scene, let's take waterfalls, for example, because that's what I like to photograph best. What I'm going to do is make it as simple as possible. And with waterfalls, I always set my aperture to f16. What f16 does is it makes the opening in the aperture ring inside of my lens really, really small. What that does is let in less light in my lens, but it also creates more depth of focus within my scene. So more of the scene is going to be focused throughout. That way, I don't have to worry about taking multiple photos and focus stacking those together. If you don't know what focus stacking is, I have a full video right here that's gonna help you understand what that is and how to use it. So if F16 is set, I know that I'm gonna have acceptable focus throughout the entire photo, and I know where to focus about a third of the way into the frame is what I usually do. And with that, everything's in focus. This has become tried and true with my waterfall photography. This also, since it reduces the light coming into my lens, it allows me to do longer exposures and smooth out the surface of the water in waterfalls, making that nice milky smooth water effect. Now the F16 is what I use with basically any huge landscape scene. I use it for overlooks, I use it for waterfalls, I use it for basically anything that's going to be bigger than something that I'm looking Looking straight down at and that takes us to our next scenario the next scenario is a small scene what a small scene does is you're taking a photo of a very intricate design or small scene in nature photography and with those what I do is dial down my aperture to about f8 People say that f8 to f11 is usually the sharpest area of your aperture and your focus in your lens. Whether that be true or not, you know, I can't tell a huge difference, but I like to use f8 for my small scenes because it is pretty sharp and it does give me a good range of focus within those small scenes. Now, why can I use f8 versus f16? Because with small scenes, I'm taking a very small photo of something that it's flat on the ground. So I'm not too worried about getting anything out of focus that's further away from my subject because everything is really flat on the ground. This can be mud tiles, this can be flowers on the ground, this can be succulents in a garden, all these things I rate as small scenes in my photography. So F8 is a great one to use because the lens is really sharp and also you're letting in more light so you can use faster shutter speeds if there's any wind blowing or anything like that. So those are the apertures that you really need to use and understand with your landscape photography. Hey, if you want more videos on how you can get better with your photography, click this playlist. It's gonna take you through multiple videos that are gonna show you how to take better photos and improve your photography as well.